So I was actually doing research on various Mars discoveries, including finding this incredible image of an unusual scratch-like formation on the surface of the red planet, when I came upon a study that conducted a somewhat intriguing experiment in the process of discovering something we could one day bring to Mars to maybe terraform it. A study that we're going to explore a little bit more in this video, and a study that basically introduces us to something that seems to be even more indestructible than our cute friends tardigrades. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this intriguing new experiment of life essentially surviving in Martian conditions, and of life that seems to be even more resilient than any tardigrade known to us. Although ironically, it's actually a type of life that tardigrade really loves. As a matter of fact, most tardigrades are also sometimes known as moss piglets, and that's because they mostly live inside moss. This is usually where most researchers find them. And it's moss that we're going to be discussing today, because one of the recent studies discovered a type of moss that seems to be practically immortal. But a very specific type of moss that usually only lives in extreme conditions, such as the driest deserts or the coldest locations on the planet, where nothing else seems to be able to survive, and it doesn't basically have to compete with anything. And so what exactly is it, and what exactly do we know about it so far? Well, just like any other moss, Centrichia caninervis doesn't really look anything special. It's a very common desert moss that can actually be found in pretty much most of the locations on the planet, but tends to only live in harsh environments mostly because it's only able to dominate those environments since nothing else survives here. And although it's not unusual to find mosses in places like Antarctica or the Atacama Desert in Chile, nobody actually knew that this particular moss was a little bit special. And so in this recent study, what the researchers did is essentially collect these mosses from various locations and then put them under some of the most stressful situations just to see how they react. Starting with something really simple, dehydration. Once this moss was almost completely dehydrated, which essentially made it shriveled and turned all of it black, what really shocked the scientists is how fast it was able to return to being living once the water was reintroduced. Apparently all of this took approximately 20 seconds. And so within 20 seconds it went from being black and shriveled back to being fully green. And this was a telltale sign that something unusual was going on here, and so the scientists decided to conduct more tests. What's intriguing here though is that it wasn't just rehydrated, it was actually fully photosynthetic within just two minutes after the water was reintroduced. And that type of a extremely quick reawakening is even unusual for tardigrades. For their next test, they decided to see how this moss reacts to cold, but not just like any cold, extreme cold. And here they did two things. First, they actually had moss samples that were stored in freezing conditions at approximately minus 80 Celsius, 112 Fahrenheit, for about 5 years. And second, they also had samples that were basically immersed in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 Celsius, 320 Fahrenheit. And here, once again, all of the moss became shriveled and turned black. But once taken out from these conditions and placed in room temperatures, after one month, the frozen moss showed signs of life even if it spent at least one month in liquid nitrogen conditions. And so basically every single sample was able to sprout new moss, recovering almost completely. In most tardigrade studies, for example, scientists usually get a small percentage of tardigrades coming back to life from their tan state or from their inactive state that usually protects them from extreme environments. But in this case, pretty much all of the samples came back to life. This moss was really not impressed by cold temperatures at all. And interestingly, it was able to recover even faster if it was actually dehydrated before freezing. Which basically means that if we ever need to store this moss for long trips, dehydrating and freezing it seems to work the best. And then, to make things even more interesting, they also zapped this moss with gamma ray radiation. With the main discovery being that even radiation is not as much of a concern. Up to 4000 gray, it was actually able to survive quite well. And for humans, just 4 gray is fatal. But for this moss, in order to actually kill it, they had to irradiate it with 5000 gray in total. And that's even higher than tardigrades. For a tardigrade, a typical fatal dose is approximately 42 gray. And so here, once again, this moss seems to show extreme resilience 
we've never seen in such a complex species before. Now, there are some primitive bacteria that can actually survive higher radiation. For example, the famous Deinococcus radiodurans has been known to survive even 5000 gray. But in this case, we're talking about something way more complex and something that's technically a plant. And in this case, a really important plant that's obviously able to photosynthesize and do so much more compared to a typical bacterium. Yet here, it's able to survive super high radiation and thrive afterwards within just a few days. But one of the experiments from the study was basically a combination of all three simulating Martian conditions. And so here they focused on multiple stressors. By using what's known as CAS Planetary Atmospheres Simulation Facility, which creates similar conditions to the surface of Mars, including of course the pressure, the temperature, and the radiation, they placed this moss inside of there for approximately one week just to see what happens. Here's by the way what this facility kind of looks like. And while well, not surprisingly, it survived just fine. But somewhat disappointingly, it was unfortunately unable to grow in these conditions and could only recover once it was placed back in Earth-like conditions. Which of course means two things. First, by placing it on the surface of Mars, we're probably not going to be getting any oxygen and it's unlikely to photosynthesize, instead remaining as a shriveled form. But because it can easily survive on Mars and potentially does not require as much maintenance as other plants, it could still be the best possible plant we have right now, both for Martian colonization and to possibly serve as a source of photosynthesis and possibly even as a source of food. Although technically, in certain conditions on Mars, such as for example where it's a little bit warmer or there's just a little bit more pressure, it might be able to grow as well. But in conditions that they simulated, where the atmosphere was very low in pressure and mostly contained carbon dioxide, with the temperatures changing quite dramatically every few hours, in these conditions it was unable to grow but could easily survive for a long time. And so right now this is probably our best bet if one day we actually want to introduce plants to planet Mars. And since ironically tardigrades love living inside moss, maybe we can bring both. As a matter of fact, forming these miniature moss habitats just to see how they thrive on Mars could serve as humanity's first steps in colonizing the red planet. And from what we know about planet Earth, this is potentially what happened on Earth 470 million years ago as well. When most of the life still lived in the oceans and the surface of the planet was still somewhat inhospitable, various ancestors of today's mosses started to spread all over the surface, absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere, while also extracting minerals from within and secreting all sorts of organic acids on the surface that eventually dissolved rocks, introducing additional minerals into various habitats. Which resulted in a dramatic shift on the planet within just a few million years. And although at first this dramatically dropped CO2 levels in the atmosphere, eventually leading to the ice ages on the planet, once the ice melted, this chemically enriched Earth now became a new home for a lot of different species. And so if these ancient mosses helped colonize early Earth, it's quite likely we can use similar techniques to try to terraform Mars as well. Making the discovery of this species of moss particularly exciting. Not to mention that a lot of medicines also tend to come from mosses as well. And technically various cultures use moss for anything from for example carpeting to bedding or even use moss to help with structural support. And so because of these discoveries, we now have a completely new candidate to send to the red planet. A somewhat unremarkable looking moss that seems to exist in a lot of places on the planet and currently has a very high chance to possibly survive on Mars. But because this is just the first such study and because this is all we know about this moss, there's nothing else to say about it. Once there are more studies or more discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the other Martian videos in some of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.